All right, we're back with some example problems um, for the kinematic equations, uh, the four ones that we went over last video. Um, and their limitations are constant acceleration, and that will never, uh, we will never go above that. So constant acceleration is the highest order of motion we'll see in this physics course. And so these equations will literally work for anything you throw at them from, uh, from your book or from the homework in the book. So the first question I picked was an airplane accelerates from rest down a runway at 3.2 meters per second for 32.8 seconds, determine the distance traveled. And so I love to draw pictures. Um, we're dealing with motion in one dimension, so pictures, um, you probably won't need them, but it's good to practice now because when you start getting into two and three dimensions, sometimes drawing a picture can really help you figure out what's going on with the problem. So. My x-axis I'm going to have going this way. As we can see, the plane starts here, and it's going in this direction, right? So this is its, this is its displacement, we'll say. And that's what we're looking for, is we're looking for the magnitude of the displacement, which we call the distance. So we are interested in figuring out how far this plane traveled. Um, and I'm, instead of writing that as d for distance, I'm going to go ahead and write it as delta x as a vector um, because I like to work with displacement because I have all my problems written, in, uh, all these equations written in terms of displacement. All right, we also know the acceleration. The acceleration is constant, so we know that this, these equations will all work for that. And so the acceleration is acceleration equals 3.2 meters per second squared and we know the time right i'm not going to draw time on the same line here because space and time are, are definitely not in the same direction um, but we can write here that this is time equals zero at this point and once we reach the end of our journey that is time equals 32.8 seconds What else can we glean from this problem? So an airplane accelerates, we've got the acceleration from rest, all right, so from rest, that means that we're starting from rest, which gives us a valuable piece of information, which is that the velocity initial equals zero meters per second, and that can be very useful. We don't know V final, but we may not even need it. All right, so let's look. What do we know? We know time, we know acceleration, and we know velocity initial. What are we looking for? We're looking for the distance or the magnitude of the displacement. So we're gonna start looking through these equations. So I've got acceleration. I've got acceleration here too. Uh, I've got the initial, I've got the initial here too. Um, I don't have the final. And also this equation doesn't even include the thing that I'm looking for, which is the magnitude of the displacement. You'll notice there's no delta x in this equation, so that's not gonna work. So we'll go ahead and put a big red x by that one. All right, now let's, uh, let's move down. Um, here we have acceleration, we know acceleration. Uh, there's one known. We don't know delta x, there's one unknown. We don't know vf, that's two unknowns and one known. We do know VI, so what we end up with here is we end up with two knowns. I'm gonna write it as two K and two UNK. And so uh, that, would, that would require two equations to solve this problem. So because we're not gonna be able to solve this problem with this equation in one shot, we're gonna go ahead and put that on the back burner and try to find a better equation. So now we come to this next one. Well, here we have, we have acceleration. We have acceleration. We have time. We have time. Uh, we have the initial. We have the initial. Um, X initial is arbitrary because, uh, like we talked about before, um, because delta X equals X final minus X initial, then what I could do here is I could subtract X initial minus x initial from both sides and that would cancel 
Um, and then x final minus x initial is delta x, right? So this is equal to delta x equals, and this is one way you may see this written. And we're looking for delta x. So this is good. We've got literally three knowns and one unknown. So we have three knowns, one unknown, which means that we're definitely going to use this equation because if there is a proper solution, we're going to get it in one shot. We only need one equation. And so let's go ahead and work out the math now. Um, hopefully this picture was helpful for visualization. I'm going to make some room for the math now. So now we know what equation we're using. We're using one half acceleration times squared plus v initial times time equals delta x. And so now what we're going to do is we're, we're going to plug in what we know. Well, we know that uh, v initial was zero, right? Because we started from rest. So if v initial is zero, zero times anything is also zero. So that goes to zero. Um, we were given the acceleration. Um, oh, wrong problem. Yeah, we were given an acceleration. It starts from rest, so vi, v initial equals zero. Uh, we're given an acceleration of 3.2 meters per second squared. So we have one half times 3.2 meters per second squared. Uh, we were given time, total time. Uh, time equals 32.8 seconds, 32.8 seconds. And we're squaring time, right? All right. And that's going to equal delta x, which is what we're looking for. So let's go ahead and uh, get a calculator. Give me just a second. All right, I apologize for that. I didn't have my calculator on me. So 32.8 squared is going to give us 1,075.84. 1,075.84. And what are the units there? Well, seconds squared, right? Because we've got 32.8 seconds. We're squaring both of those things. So we're going to put seconds squared for the unit. And here we still have 3.2 meters per second squared times one half, which is unitless, equals delta x, or the difference between our initial and our final position. So you'll notice second squared cancels with second squared, and we're left with meters, which is good because we're looking for distance. Distance is in meters, so our dimensional analysis is telling us uh, that we're on the right track. Now all we have to do is multiply through these numbers. 1,075.84 times 3.2 times 1 half. Um, and what we end up with is finding that the distance travel is approximately, actually, in this case, I'm not rounding at all. I'm just going to give an exact answer. Uh, 344 meters. So I don't need to put approximately. This is actually, this is the distance that that aircraft traveled in that amount of time with that acceleration. All right, so we've got this problem down. Let's move on to the next one. And I would just like to point out that we used um, this equation here. All right, next problem. <clears throat> we'll take this one a bit quicker now that we know the process. Um, so. A bike accelerates uniformly. What that means uniformly, you could call it that it's constant acceleration, which is great because these equations only work for constant acceleration. All right, uh, a bike accelerates uniformly from rest, right? Whenever we see from rest, I want you to write the initial equals zero meters per second. Whenever you see from rest, just write that down immediately. To a speed of 7.1 meters per second, well, that's our final velocity, 7.1 meters per second. So with a constant acceleration, this bike went from zero meters per second to 7.1 meters per second. Oh, I'm sorry, not squared. Um, with a constant acceleration, we went from, we started at rest, zero meters per second, 
and at some point we ended up at a final velocity of 7.1 meters per second. All right, over a distance of 35.4 meters, well that means that delta x equals 35.4 meters. Determine the acceleration. So what we're looking for is we're looking for acceleration. And now we're going to go ahead and take a look at our kinematic equations. Uh, let's start with this one. Well, we have V initial and V final in this equation uh, and X, but we don't have acceleration at all in this equation. And so we're not going to be able to find what we're looking for in this equation. Uh, this equation, we have acceleration, which is what we're looking for, but we don't have time here, right? We don't have any time, and also this equation doesn't allow us to use our V final, which is some knowledge that we have. So for that reason, we're going to get rid of it. And then up here, we've got acceleration, acceleration, that's what we're looking for. Um, delta X, we know delta X. V final, we know V final. V initial, we know V initial. So by my count, that's three knowns, one unknown, which definitely means Let's go for it. Let's use this equation. All right, so 2a delta x, so we've got 2 acceleration, we don't know, we're solving for that. 2a delta x is 35.4 meters equals v final squared, v final is 7.1 meters per second squared minus not plus, minus the initial, which we calculate, which we determine to be zero because it's from rest, that's zero meters per second, and we're squaring that. So let's go ahead and get acceleration. Uh, well, no, let's deal with these guys first. So zero squared is still zero. Um, 7.1 meters per second squared is 50. 0.41 meters squared per second squared. So we have to square not only the meters of the units, we have to square the seconds of the units as well. Equals 2a350 or 35.4 meters. All right, so now we're kind of at the last step of the problem. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and divide both sides by 2 times 35.4, so 2 times 35.4 is going to give us 70.8 meters times acceleration, right? So you take 2 times 35.4, you get 70.8 meters times acceleration equals 50.41 meters squared per second squared. Now we divide both sides by 70.8 meters. Cancels over here to one. And what we end up with is acceleration equals uh, 50.41 divided by 70.8. That's going to give us 0 0.712 approximately. I don't have the full answer this time. I'm rounding, so I write approximately. Uh, let's figure out what the units are. Well, if we inverse and multiply here, we would end up with um, the units would be meters squared per meter second squared. Because we're dividing this by meters, so meters squared uh, divided by meter second squared. And so the meters cancel and you end up with a meter per second squared. And of course, the units of acceleration are meters per second squared. So the dimensional analysis is telling us this looks this looks accurate. Um, and so those are the two problems I wanted to go through uh, for this video. Uh, next video we'll go through two more problems and then I'll probably throw in a couple uh, random problems, uh, maybe a couple where we need more than one equation. All right, I hope this was helpful and I'll see you next time.